Okay, so I've got the software up here, and I'm going to start going through uh, some of the parameters, tunable parameters. And uh, we'll see how far we get. I don't want the video to be too long. but um, So we have the basic setup items up here. So uh, the very first one, um, now as I've said before, there's a lot of these things that you don't need to change. They're set up specifically for the Buick and you don't need to change it. Uh, but if you're going to change injector injectors, um, here's where you do that. And you click on this uh, calculator and you put in the engine displacement, number of cylinders, your injector size, in this case this was made for 80 pound Siemens high impedance injectors, uh, which I found flow somewhere in the 78 or 79 pound per hour range, so that's why 79 is in there. Uh, the last box is the stoic air fuel ratio for the fuel you're using. And so for gasoline, it would be 14.7. If you're going to use uh, E85, you would set it to 9.8. Um, now, if you're going to use the flex fuel feature, you would leave it at 14.7. At, at and then the, later on in the software, I'll show you where it automatically compensates for uh the, the different uh, stoic value. Um, so when you enter in these values uh, uh, and you hit OK, it will calculate out uh, this base uh, pulse width. And that's it. You would close it up. And uh, so the next would be general settings. And this is where you can set up uh, mainly the map sensor. Most of this other stuff you, you don't need to change right away. Um, some other time we can go over reasons why you might change these other things but on this page in general we're mainly looking at the map sensor and if you're going to use the onboard map sensor you would leave this set to map this is the, the input port now if you're going to connect an external map sensor uh, then you can bring down this uh, selection box and select where you've connected that map sensor to, which could be some of these uh, analog inputs. It could be uh, these uh, CAN analog inputs. Um, but So it just depends on where you connected it. That's what will tell you what, which one to select. Uh, next on the list, uh, here's where you, you can set up a rev limiter. Uh, there's uh, engine states. This kind of, uh, this basically says, tells the ECU when you're in the idle state or when you're at full throttle, uh, things like that. Uh, for example, here is the throttle position um, percent you know, under which you would be considered with the, to have the throttle off and tells it when to go into idle mode, um, things like that. Uh, so you've got um, fan control, you know, what output pin your fan is connected to, which this is already set up for the Buick, and what temperature you want the fan to come on, when you want it to turn off. Uh, idle up steps, basically that means when your fan comes on, do you want it to automatically add some idle air control steps? Uh, or in other words, the IAC. Um, sometimes when your fan comes on, you might get a little droop in the idle speed, and by immediately adding some steps it will help uh, prevent that down here you can uh, tell it when when the AC is on do you want the fan to immediately come on and usually yes you do want it to come on uh, here are some ways you can have the fan turn itself off for example I have it set up if you get over 60 percent throttle the fan will shut off um, if the uh, car exceeds 40 miles an hour uh, the fan will shut off. Now there are some cars that this needs to be set higher, maybe 60 or 70 miles an hour, uh, just due to the way the air flows through the radiator. Uh, next on the list, uh, torque converter lockup. Uh, this tells which output pin the torque converter is connected to, which is already set up for the Buick. Uh, this means under 2% the torque converter will unlock, 2% uh, throttle that is. If it gets over 40%, it'll unlock, and this is the map uh, KPA. If it gets over 110 KPA, uh, it'll unlock. Uh, 
and here's your mile per hour setting for the torque converter right here 50 miles an hour and whether you want to use uh, take into account the gear that you're in you don't have to you could turn it off and it won't care what gear you're in it'll, uh, gear you're in, it'll only look at mile per hour um, but if you only want it to lock in fourth gear uh, and your transmission pressure switches are working correctly uh, you can do that and this is a, just a delay so you would need to meet 50 miles an hour and fourth gear and then you would have to have those for two seconds before it would lock uh, barometric correction this uh, ECU has a separate barometric pressure sensor that it's always monitoring and you can this is the correction that is done to the fuel based on the barometric pressure and I've kind of preset this but if you live in an area where you're doing massive altitude changes up in mountains and things like that you might have to tune this to uh, get just the right air fuel ratio depending on your altitude um, a lot of these things you don't need to change you're not going to be using a math sensor normally um, air density uh, things like that you probably don't need to change that for, for the basic uh, tuning so let's do the fuel um, this is the other thing you would most likely change if you're changing injectors so let's go back to here so if you want to change injectors you would put in the new injector size here hit OK and then in here you need to put in the injector offset or dead time uh, for that particular injector um, this is going to vary um, this may vary from the advertised offset that you might receive with injectors um, because the injector offset can vary depending on how the injector is driven and how much voltage goes to it and, and things like that so if you're changing injector, injectors you can ask me or um, uh, I might have the information posted on a good starting point for that oh by the way these other graphs you don't need to pay attention to those for now basically uh, we have this set up so that the same injector offset is used for all the injectors you could change that and have a different offset for each a different injector but that would be rare but if you did then you would have all these other um, charts to to look at and change all right so let's see um, again injector timing we won't need to change that for now staged injection that has to do with having another set of injectors uh, flex fuel um, oh, I guess I forgot injector small pulse width this you normally won't need to change this unless you have very big injectors like 160 pound or larger there's a possibility you might need to tune um, the what we call the non-linear area of operating area of the uh, injector uh, which uh, sometimes under two milliseconds it doesn't operate in a linear fashion and you have to change uh, um, how this is calibrated that's rare usually I'll kind of set that up for you but if you get to that point you can ask me about it the flex fuel alright so if you want to run in flex fuel mode in other words you want to be able to put an E85 or gas or any mixture of the two you would turn this on uh, you would obviously need to have the flex fuel sensor connected um, to this uh, input the uh, in, on the Buick it's where the mass airflow sensor was connected um, temperature the flex fuel sensors can actually uh, sense temperature also so um, you can turn that on or not uh, it's already calibrated uh, I think for the typical sensors but the important part is in here this is calibrated for the typical flex fuel sensor uh, those are frequency output sensors 50 to 150 Hertz and uh, this says that at 50 Hertz it's 0% at 150 Hertz is 100% ethanol the important part is this fuel multiplier so if you are at uh, pure gasoline which would be this number here that means just multiply the fueling by 100% which means there's no change at all if you had full ethanol 100% ethanol uh, it's going to multiply it to 163 percent 
And um, I've found that when I run E85, this is more like 153, uh, but it could vary uh, with, with your setup. Um, so what happens is as the ethanol content increases, the it's going to multiply the fuel up to this percentage. Uh, and this would be, again, this would be at 100% or E100, not E85. E85 is going to be in between there. These two boxes here, you can tell it to add timing as the ethanol content increases. Uh, I usually don't do that to start off with. Uh, let's see, this sets up the temperature. This down here is if the, eth if the ethanol sensor, the flex fuel sensor fails, you can tell it what the backup reading should be. So this is the main screen to set up flex fuel. And there are other ways, there are some other settings for, you know, boost control and uh, things like that. If you want it to change, we can go over that later. But this is the main part for fuel. Uh, overrun fuel cut has to do with when you let off the gas uh, at a higher speed, for example, and you let off and you would want the fuel to be cut off while you're coasting. Uh, I have that off by default, but if you want to play around with that, you can turn it on and, and go through all the settings. This AFR and EGO or EGO control, um, this has to do with the closed loop fueling based on the wideband sensor. Most of this I have set up already for you. Uh, this is kind of a safety right here only correct above this AFR and only correct below this uh, AFR so that's saying if if the temp if the wideband is reading way out of range it's gonna assume there's something wrong with it and it won't make do corrections if it reads below 9 or above 18 and a half this tells it to only correct above uh, this coolant temperature and only correct below this throttle position. I, uh, position. I have this set very high so that it always will correct because there can be some situations if you don't have your TPS calibrated uh, just right, it may go over 100%, which doesn't really hurt anything. It's just that I want to make sure that it doesn't accidentally turn off closed loop correction. The PID, uh, these things down here, uh, has to do with how fast you want it to correct. And um, if you find that the system is overcorrecting and giving you some fluctuations in the air fuel ratio you can you know take these down or if it's not correcting fast enough you can take it up again it's something you have to experiment with and you can ask me ask me about it if you uh, uh, have some uh, issues the AFR table so this is the main table you use to tell the system what air fuel ratio you want at this RPM and this load and um, I do have this pre-filled out usually it doesn't mean you have to use the values I set in there but uh, usually it's pretty close um, you know cruising would be in this area that you know the 14 and a half uh, area here would be the idle area and as you as the uh, boost comes up and the RPMs come up you'll be going this way through and you'll end up in this area over here and you can see that the higher we go with uh, boost um, or manifold pressure, it gets a little bit richer. These values over here, you can change these by clicking on it and making it whatever you want. Um, if you want to change a lot of them, let's say you already have this table set up, but you want to reconfigure uh, the axis, you can click on that button and change whatever you want here. Let's say you wanted this to be 65 instead. And, and you could change RPM values, whatever you want. When you're done, you click this button, and it will reconfigure the table to be correct for where, whatever changes you made. In other words, you don't have to recalibrate this table or, or move anything around. It will automatically reconfigure it to how you changed your settings, um, which is very handy. So let's see here. Let's see, move on to... Uh, some of these things. Uh, this this has to do with um, the high and low limit of correction, fuel correction from the wideband. And 
in, for example, this table, I most of the higher boost area I've set to 10%. This is plus or minus 10%. Uh, there's not currently there's not a separate value for the upper and the lower. It's basically this is plus or minus whatever you put into that box. For idle, I have it set a little bit tighter. And this row down here is for decel. Like when you let off the gas, it's very common to um, have some erratic air fuel ratios sometimes. And so I, I narrow up the correction down there so things don't get too crazy. The delay table, this has to do with um, the time it takes for a correction to occur to when the wideband reads it. And um, without going into a lengthy explanation, uh, I, I kind of have this set up. Uh, this isn't the current way I set it up, but uh, I try to set this up as close as I can so that it operates correctly. OK, there's well, there's also a safety system here. You can enable this to uh, cut the fuel if um, the air fuel ratio goes out of a range that you set. So if it gets too lean, uh, you can you can tell it to shut the engine down. So that's and it kind of helps uh, save your motor if if something gets too lean. And this is the VE table. So that you know this these are one of the the main tables, the AFR table and the VE table are some of the main tables that you look at for tuning. Now again, this you can set the axis wherever you want. Um, I sometimes I like to have a lot of resolution way down low in here because that's the drivability area and many times you don't need quite as much resolution in the high boost area uh, but again just like the other tables you can change these to whatever you want um, and also if you click down here and then you change these values and click this uh, interpolate Z button it will reconfigure the table for you um, so that you don't have to you know revise the whole table if you if you change some of the stuff uh, if you have a uh, I have this set up for 400 kPa because that's what the onboard sensor will read up to and if you connect a sensor that doesn't maybe you use a three and a half bar AEM uh, which doesn't go all the way to 400 you don't necessarily need to reconfigure this table it just it just won't go that high is all it'll just hang out down in the you know, 330, 350 area. There's no particular reason to change that unless you really want to. Fuel pump and pressure. This has to do with the control of the fuel pump. And if you're using a fuel pressure sensor and you can tell it to monitor uh, the fuel pressure um, and, and things like that. But some of this has to do with if you have a, like, see it says fuel pump duty table. If you're trying to pulse with modulate a fuel pump and things like that. And, uh, that's kind of a special situation we can go over at another time. It's not one of your basic tuning, uh, issues. So this, uh, page here is actually kind of handy. What it's doing is it's showing you every single thing that's affecting the, the fuel calculation. So if the car's running and, um, something's way out in left field, you can pull this up and these gauges will all be doing something and you can look at each one each thing that's contributing to the calculation and uh, it's kind of neat to watch to, to see what, what all is involved um, I think I'm gonna leave this video at that with with these two and, and uh, I'll move on to the next video to uh, on these other ones so that the videos don't get too long so um, uh, that's it for this one, and I will talk to you in uh, soon in the next video.